Corythosaurus is a genus of hadrosaurid duck-billed dinosaur from the Upper Cretaceous period and lived about 77 to 74 million years ago. This dinosaur is well known due to the discovery of many complete specimens, including the nearly complete holotype found by Barnum Brown in 1911. Paleontologists described it as a large dinosaur with tall spines in a ridge along its back. Its snout was shallow and delicate compared to that of many other hadrosaurids, suggesting that it may have been more of a selective feeder that browsed for food in younger leaves. After three years of studying the holotype skeleton, Brown gave it the name Corythosaurus, meaning helmeted lizard, because their crest resembled the Corinthian helmets worn by ancient Greek soldiers of the city-state of Corinth. Brown also found that Corythosaurus was most closely related to Belafrons from Mexico, Nipponosaurus and Olorotitan from Russia, and Hypercosaurus from the United States. Together, these hadrosaurids became known as the fan-crested Lambiosaurinase. In the Jurassic Park franchise, Corythosaurus made an early appearance as one of the dinosaurs seen on the mural to the Visitor Center restaurant in Jurassic Park. However, its most notable appearance was in Jurassic Park 3 when it appeared in two scenes. First, Corythosaurus can be seen briefly when Alan Grant and the rest of the party are circling Isla Sorna for the first time. Then again, while trying to escape from a pursuing group of velociraptors, Dr. Grant and the others trapped on the island inadvertently run into a Parasaurolophus and Corythosaurus herd, causing a stampede that forces the characters to separate to avoid being crushed. If you'd like to keep learning more about Corythosaurus, then this video will feature a complete paleontological profile of the helmeted lizard and then attempt to recreate its environment in the game Jurassic World Evolution 2. Corythosaurus is a herbivorous hadrosaurid that lived around 75 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period in what is now North America. This large dinosaur weighed around 4 tons and grew up to 30 feet long and was slightly longer than an African elephant, making it one of the largest hadrosaurids. Their prominent crests were enormous as well, measuring up to 2 feet tall. When it was first described, it was thought that Corythosaurus lived mostly in water due to the appearance of webbed hands and feet. However, it was later discovered that the so-called webs were in fact deflated padding, much like that found on many modern mammals. The most distinctive feature of the Lambiosaurinase was the hollow crest on top of their heads. The size and shape of these crests vary greatly and as a result different skeletons of Corythosaurus have been identified. However, comparison of more than 20 skulls has shown that the crest changes as it grows and differs between the sexes. The crest of Corythosaurus was not a solid bone. It contained tubes that were connected to the nostrils. All Lambiosaurinase species had different crests and it was once thought that the crests were air tanks but this theory was dismissed when it was realized that dinosaurs were not aquatic. It has also been proposed that the crests were lined with nasal tissue to help provide a sensitive sense of smell, but the most popular theory is that they were used to make loud, low-pitched cries like a wind or brand instrument, such as a trombone. The internal structures of the crest were studied and found to be quite complex, making possible a call that could be used to alert other corythosaurs to the presence of food, a potential threat from a predator, or for attracting a mate. The nasal passageways emit low frequency sounds when Corythosaurus exhaled. The individual crest would produce different sounds and it was later found that each species of Lambiosaurinae had different unique sounds. Nasal passageways of Corythosaurus as well as of Hypercosaurus and Lambiosaurus are S-shaped with Parasaurolophus only possessing U-shaped tubes. However, even though the range for different Lambiosaurinae nasal passages vary, they all probably made low pitch sounds. This might be because low sounds, below 400 Hz, travel a set distance in any environment, while higher sounds, above 400 Hz, have a larger spread in the distance traveled. This would infer behavior where Corythosaurus may have moved around in groups or even herds where the eyes of many individuals were looking out for danger, something that would significantly increase the survival chances of Corythosaurus or what they would have been if they were solitary animals. Like other duckbill and some other late Cretaceous plant-eating dinosaurs, Corythosaurus had a huge number of teeth crammed together into batteries, forming a single grinding surface on each side of the upper and lower jaws. This allowed the dinosaurs to process large amounts of food at once. The hadrosaurs had broad duck-like snouts to cut a wide swathe through the herb layer, while Lambiosaurinae such as Corythosaurus had narrower snouts and presumably fed more selectively. Corythosaurus could also move on two legs as well as on all fours as it could be guessed from the footprints that have been discovered. 
paleontologists estimate that corythosaurs could run at speeds up to 20 to 30 miles per hour, which is helpful for evading predators. It also had a long tail that was stiffened by ossified tendons, an adaptation that helps prevent the tail itself from drooping down. Finally, one of the most unique discoveries about this dinosaur comes from discovered skin impressions that indicate that the body of Corythosaurus was covered in small scaly bumps of several types. Corythosaurus was first discovered in 1911 by renowned American paleontologist Barnum Brown, who unearthed a near-complete skeleton in Red Deer River, a city in Alberta, Canada. Brown, known as Mr. Bones thanks to his stellar reputation in his field, also excavated a significant amount of skin, allowing him to understand more about the genus. By 1914, another specimen was discovered by Brown along with paleontologist technician Peter Kaizen. That year, Brown named the species Corythosaurus casuarius. Its genus name refers to the crest's resemblance to a Corinthian helmet, while the species name means cassowary, in reference to the flightless bird which has a similar crest on its head. Both specimens are now housed in the American Museum of Natural History in their original death poses. The two best preserved specimens of Corythosaurus found by Charles H. Sternberg in 1912 were lost on December 6, 1916 while being carried by the SS Mount Temple to the United Kingdom during World War I. They were being sent to Arthur Smith Woodward, a paleontologist of the British Museum of Natural History in England, when the ship transporting them was sunk by the German merchant raider SMS Maui in the middle of the ocean. The dinosaurs are known to have sclerotic rings like birds do, but they are not always preserved. Fortunately, the sclerotic rings of Corythosaurus have been found and studied, revealing them to be those of a cathomeral creature. What this means is that Corythosaurus would be active for short periods during the day and night. Although this might sound unusual, cathomeral lifestyles have been suggested for many other dinosaurs. This might suggest that when Corythosaurus foraged, food was only eaten in moderation to be digested quickly in smaller amounts. Being cathomeral might have also given Corythosaurus the flexibility to live alongside other herbivores in the ecosystem that were either active during the daytime as well as those that were nocturnal. In 1975, American paleontologist Peter Dodson studied the differences between the skulls and crests of different species of Lambiosaurinae dinosaurs. He found that the differences in size and shape may have actually been related to the gender and age of the animal, which was later confirmed by many other paleontologists. Much more recently in 2022, some unknown fossils were described as belonging to Corythosaurus, signaling yet another discovery of fossils in the United States since they have mostly been discovered in Canada. For now, we wait until further expeditions and discoveries to give us more insight on the life of Corythosaurus. During the late Cretaceous period, Corythosaurus was the most common hadrosaur discovered in the dinosaur park formation and, to date, has been the most common dinosaur discovered in this formation. The smooth grey sandstone and green tinged mudstone of the formation provide evidence of a much wetter fluvial and coastal plain environment, when the landscape was dotted with ponds and swamps and bisected by wide, deep, meandering rivers with high sediment loads. During this period, the climate was warmer than present, although throughout the period a cooling thread is evident. While Corythosaurus is able to traverse forested land by using its enormous body to push foliage aside, it largely prefers open fields where it can graze on shrubs and isolated groups of trees. Although it may have wandered throughout swampy areas, Corythosaurus probably spent more of its time foraging for food in woodland habitats, often situated between hills or mountains. As Corythosaurus is considered a herding dinosaur, some paleontologists theorize that it may have migrated from shorelines to higher ground to reproduce. Fossil flora from the earliest parts of the Cretaceous period consists mainly of ferns, conifers, cycads, and ginkgos. Angiosperms, also known as flowering plants, made their first appearance during this early Cretaceous period. This Cretaceous period saw a dramatic change in plant life, with the evolution of angiosperms and eventually grasses. At first, they were rare and not diverse, but steadily became increasingly prominent, and by the end of the Cretaceous, they dominated vegetation in most parts of the world. But until the end of the period, these flowering plants were outnumbered by the conifers, ferns, cycads, and ginkgos surviving from the Jurassic. 
And as mentioned earlier, paleontologists realized that the beak of Corythosaurus was shallow and delicate, and concluded that it must have been used to feed upon soft vegetation. Based on the climate of the late Cretaceous, they guessed that Corythosaurus would have been a selective feeder. Luckily, a Corythosaurus specimen has been preserved with its last meal in its chest cavity. Inside the cavity were remains of conifer needles, seeds, twigs, and fruits, meaning that Corythosaurus probably fed on all of these, implying that it was a browser. Unfortunately, like all the dinosaurs living in this era, Corythosaurus was one of the dinosaurs which died out in the KT extinction at the end of the Mesozoic era. This began abruptly when a meteorite slammed into the Earth, leading to a mass extinction that wiped about 75% of all species on Earth and ended the dinosaur dominant era. Corythosaurus lived in the forests of North America, coexisting with other large hadrosaurs, including the long crested Parasaurolophus, the short crested Brachylophosaurus, and the hook nosed Gryposaurus. You also had Lambiosaurus, which was named after Lawrence Lamb, and the small crested Procerolophus. Studies of the jaw anatomies and mechanics of these hadrosaurs suggest that they all occupied slightly different ecological niche in order to avoid direct competition for food in such a crowded eco-space. Corythosaurus also lived alongside numerous other giant herbivores, such as the ceratopians like the 16-foot-long Chasmosaurus, whose massive frill was actually hollow. Other ceratopsians include the Coronosaurus, a similarly sized dinosaur which had a unique adornment of ossifications near the dorsal frill surface, and the Centrotaurus, another similarly sized dinosaur whose name means pointed lizard and refers to the series of small horns placed along the margin of their dorsal frill surface. The sharp frill Stericosaurus was also among the Ceratopsians living alongside Corythosaurus in the Dinosaur Park formation. Also living in this section of the formation include the Ankylosaurids like the Scolosaurus, whose name means pointed spike lizard, the Edmontonia, a bulky broad and tank-like dinosaur, and Diopolosaurus, whose name means doubled armored lizard. Others include the Planoposaurus, which was mistaken as a Stegosaurus was first discovered, and Euplocephalus, who we know loads about due to its vast amounts of discovered fossils. The only large predators known from the same levels of the formation as Corythosaurus are the Tyrannosaurids like the 30-foot long Gorgosaurus and its similarly sized cousin the Dasbutosaurus, which is widely accepted as the direct ancestor to Tyrannosaurus rex. Smaller predators include the 6-foot long Sauronidolestes and the very slim and nimble Stenonicosaurus. Corythosaurus is not a dinosaur that many people will remember from the original Jurassic Park trilogy, especially because it only makes an appearance in the third film. While Corythosaurus was planned to appear in Jurassic Park, Engine did not have any living specimens on the island at the time of the 1993 incident, but they did have DNA samples and preserved embryos ready for use. The species was prematurely recreated by InGen, and enough information would be recovered to be placed in an information sheet that could be later be used by InGen hunters in 1997 during the East of Sorna incident. It was then successfully recreated by InGen in the Embryonics Administration Lab on East of Sorna in secret after the acquisition of InGen by Masrani Global Corporation and after the passing of the Gene Guard Act, alongside Ankylosaurus, Spinosaurus, and Ceratosaurus. After being cloned and experimented on for a period of 9 months in the late 90s, the unnamed InGen personnel set the dinosaurs free alongside the other illegally bred dinosaurs. Corythosaurus roamed freely across the island for years to come afterwards. In the initial phases of the Lost World Jurassic Park, Corythosaurus was among the many dinosaurs planned for the film, although it was mispronounced Carnithosaurus. In this initial script, a Corythosaurus would be captured by the InGen hunters but it would be later replaced by the Perisaurolophus nicknamed Elvis. This Corythosaurus was described as being red crested. And though it never appeared in the final film, it was spotted on one of the fact sheets that one of the engine hunters was carrying. However, in the next shot, Corythosaurus is changed to a Pachycephalosaurus, though it returns back to a Corythosaurus when the hunter and Dr. Berkey flee with the agitated Pachy named Friar Tuck. In the script for Jurassic Park 3, Corythosaurus was to be among the dinosaurs seen during the approach to Issa Sorna and on the riverbank after the protagonist escaped from the aviary. 
Originally, the stampede scene in the film was only going to contain Paris Rolfes, but director Joe Johnston and visual effects supervisor Jim Mitchell felt there needed to be more variety, so Corythosaurus was created for the film. An early storyboard for Jurassic World depicted a hadrosaur assembling Corythosaurus during the monorail ride sequence, but it did not appear in the final film. The Department of Prehistoric Wildlife mentioned Corythosaurus as an dinosaur living in herds that live with Parasaurolophus. This dinosaur has been confirmed in the possession of illegal breeders in London, England. In 2022, the Department of Prehistoric Wildlife and the Metropolitan Police broke up the breeding operation. During the confrontation, a single adult Corythosaurus was spotted fleeing into the streets of Finsburg Park. Hey guys, welcome back to the park. Uh, for those who uh, watched my last episode, we did do the Compsognathus habitat. One thing I'm going to do with the Corythosaurus habitat is incorporate the Compsognathus habitat. So we're going to go ahead and split this fence up. I already circled um, a nice little strip of land here for the Corythosaurus habitat. Just because there is a coastal environment that Corythosaurus lived in. So this is perfect right here, the Compsognathus coastal environment. So we're going to go ahead and incorporate that. This part right here, I added this lake because this part's going to be our swampy area. Then it's going to turn very forestry and then forest. Um, finally, sorry, we're going to go ahead and leave this as open land for grazing. So to begin, let's go ahead and work with our swamp. We're also going to incorporate a nice little river here because there were meandering rivers during this time. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to put, uh, put patches of water for our swamp here something like that is going to work well okay let's leave it like that and then let's go ahead and do very swampy so we've got cycads to work with we've got uh, conifers to work with angiosperms seed plants um, ginkgos Swampy environment. I'm really thinking cycads. So let's work with some cycads here. Let's actually open it up just a bit. Swampy environment. So we're going to do that and do a combination of angiosperms, which were not that abundant, but there were some at this time. So we'll just add a sliver of them here and there. And just to finish it off, let's add some rocks very swampy environment so you know you'd find some rocks and luckily this new update to those who have not been uh, up to date with the new jurassic world update we are going to be able to randomize and put rocks every now and then just for how i'm doing here so it's going to make the job so much easier and let's go ahead and do this nice um let's go with the temper rock over here Add a couple of them here to our open plains. Give it a nice bit of depth to it. You don't have to, you can do whatever you like, but it's good to randomize and try to make it look as natural as possible. So as we said, this part right here is gonna be our wooden environment. So we're gonna go ahead and do our conifers. Uh, we could do some bit of Temskia or some Calamites, but I'm feeling like we should do some of this forest. You know, these are you know, um, with the theme of Alamosaurus right here, so it won't look too out of place. So we'll add a couple of these, and since we do want a thick environment, let's actually switch it up to this one. So we're going to put really thick woods right here. And now that we've done that, we're going to open it up here and add just, you know, a couple of shrubs here and there. That's good enough some seed plants which were like you know the angiosperms which were starting to sprout during, sprout during this time as well as grasses so we'll add some grasses here as well we got the grassland shrubs so we can add those for the corythosaurus to graze on and i think we're mostly done aside from that you know you can add you know some different ground cover if you like to these open plains but not add too much just because it, you know, at the end of the day, it is supposed to be open grasslands. Not grasslands, but, you know, open plains, so let's not add too much. But aside from that, you know, I'll go ahead and add the Corythosaurus, and you'll be able to see how the habitat looks. 
So, you know, here opening it up and you'll see your Corita source in a bit. Um, and you can see how the habitat looks. I think it looks really well. Let's actually, you know what, do a couple of things to the comp be part of the habitat, which is to add a couple of more trees here because it is, you know, a bit swampy. Oh, let's add a couple more trees. See if these compies are going to let me. So yeah, you guys let me know how you guys like this, and uh, I'll see you uh, in the next one, okay? Let me just uh, finish it off by blending the cycads with the compi habitat. There you go. Alright guys, I'll show you guys how it looks with the Corythosaurus. Uh, hope you enjoy. Sporting unique crests that resemble that of a cassowary or ancient war helmet, Corythosaurus is one of the more popular hadrosaurs in popular media. With an enormous heavy frame, this herbivore could pose a threat if it felt threatened, making Corythosaurus a beautiful but deadly addition to your Jurassic Park. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. See you in the next one.